Hey guys, what's up? Nico again here. And in this 3D Printed Profits episode, I have with us Joe. Joe, where are you coming from, man? Hey, uh, I'm coming from New Jersey. Uh, Jersey? Right across, yeah, right from right across from Staten Island. Uh, I just moved here about a year ago. I was in Brooklyn for a few years and uh, settling in New Jersey. I'm not from here. It's just kind of, I don't know. It's different. I'll tell you that, man. Jersey, Jersey. Cool. So um, as always, you guys... Um, Make sure you guys join us in the Facebook group, 3D Printed Profits, uh, sorry, 3D Printing Side Hustle group. Link for that is in the description below. And um, without further ado, let's start the show, man. Uh, Joe, welcome. Thank you. I'm so, excited to be here, man. Oh, the pleasure's all mine, man. So let's talk about your background here for a second. Um, what is, this is a side hustle, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, right. It was, and it was interestingly enough, like it, it wasn't intended to be um it just kind of happened they and never went, usually are yeah I, I bought an ender 5 um just kind of messing around i had a concept in my head and then next thing i know i'm you know eight printers in and i'm like oh so this is a thing <laughs> yeah, right right yeah so um so what is it that you do what is your your job title Sure. So uh, I'm a lead UX researcher. So basically, I get to get into the nitty gritty and find out what makes users click. You know? So, you know, what, what do they like? What don't they don't they like um, in consumer electronics? And basically uh, try to make adjustments and make suggestions to the company to, you know, make a better product based off of feedback. So that definitely helps in yeah. business. Yeah, hundred percent. Like we're about to talk offline. How you can you know help me? So we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll jump into that a little bit. Do you mind? Oh yeah, go for it. So let's talk up. Let's dive into your business here a little bit, man. Sure. Um, what is it that you uh, what is it that you sell? All right. So I have a, a vast. No, it's not really that vast. It's probably like a handful of like best sellers. Um, but like my highest, my hot product is this thing. How simple is this? This is like. This is so basically it's just a sunshade for a camera. That oh my is, god. The people use them outside and basically electronics don't like the heat, but if you're outside for hours at a time, it overheats. So what do you do? Create a sunshade. And I sell this thing. Um at the beginning, it, I was, you know, selling them for 25, 30 bucks a pop. It takes like a dollar fifty plastic, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um and you know now you know people started to join the join the competition. So now I'm down to like 15 bucks a pop, but I was moving like 40, 50 of those a week. Um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> those things were flying. Um, and you know so that that's where it all started. You know, I was trying to solve a problem, and um, you know it, I had known it has been a problem because I'm part of a lot of Facebook groups and various different hobbies, and I identified a problem and try to solve it and people loved it <laughs> that's awesome dude so what was the what was the revenue and the profit on that um at its peak sure so um so i started selling these like january or february 19th um for a while i remember the date because i was like oh my god i've made this much since this what uh but i think uh this year my peak was about 1700 dollars a month Dang. um profit yeah that's in profit. Yeah, that's profit. That's fantastic, man. <laughs> and and this is from one Ender 5? No, so that was the thing. So I bought the Ender 5 last November, and I couldn't get it to work for nothing, man. And I, I <laughs> you know, it took me like three months to get it to work. And finally, like, I had got a user to jump on on a call with me. Um, and we just sat there for six hours straight troubleshooting this thing. Oh, my and God. Six hours straight. And he's like, I don't know. He's like, I have a farm. I can't figure it out. And I, I don't even remember what it ended up being. I think it was just bad firmware. Like, and like, I don't know what, it, like oh. why it was causing such a problem, but I had never compiled firmware before. However, like I have a background in computer programming and network security and all this stuff. So like, this shouldn't be hard, but it was just completely killing me. Um, but eventually I got it to work. And from there, now I'm up to, um, I, I quickly took advantage of the $100 uh, deals for the Ender 3 Pro. Yeah. 
Oh man, I wish there I was, was using... a micro center here, dude. dude ah. I was using everyone's phone number, everyone's phone number, and it was just like because you have to. It's unique. You have to be a new customer to use it, right? So, um, yeah, I would, and that's if I expand again, I intend to take full advantage of that because by the time I purchased the Netter three for that price, and then I went and bought a PEI bed sheet, and then I turned around and bought an all metal hot end. I was on, I was off the races, you know, like it, I didn't need to go and drop 200 and something. I was still below 170, I think with all of my upgrades. So um, how much did you buy the Ender 5 for? The Ender 5 I bought, I think it was 350. 350? Yeah, which great printer, by the way, but like I have all intentions on selling that thing and picking up two more Ender 3 pros because like their workhorses, so Ender 5 only has one nozzle. But if I can sell that and buy two or three more pros for a for hundred bucks a micro center, I'm going to do it. Um, right. The production increases at that point and, and exactly. your capacity. Yeah. hundred percent. And you know, it does have a bigger footprint too. So, you know, if I can remove that, I can replace it with two under threes and be on my way. I, I agree. So you turned $350 into 15,000, about $20,000 is what you're going to turn it into. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Then look at you. I like that. Yeah, it's fun too, man. Cause it's crazy. Cause like, and uh, it's a different type of hustle. It's, it, it can be very passive, right? You could very well spend only a small amount of time, you know, dealing with maintenance. Um, but for the most part, man, I wake up, I check my orders, I fulfill them. And this is all before I go to work, which I work from home, which is super convenient. So I guess <laughs> like <laughs> it's super convenient. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I wake up uh, in an hour before I'm supposed to be, you know, sitting in this chair and I fulfill my orders. I start all my printers again, make sure they all have filament and I start them and then I go back upstairs, start work. And, you know, before my work day's over, lunch happens. I go down, make sure nothing crazy has happened. Um, but of course, I'm monitoring it, too. I've got cameras down there. But um, yeah, it all runs in my basement. So it's it's mostly passive. Like right now, I've got eight or eight things printing so it's like you know okay so, so how many printers are you up to now i'm at eight in total. eight machines so you're yeah. at full capacity do you plan on ending outside of that uh it, it depends right so uh, i'm learning that uh this is this is very this can be seasonal so you know right now i'm probably in the slow times because baseball season where people are streaming and recording baseball or other types of sports outside football well, yep yeah, where, you know where sun can be a problem um, so I'm noticing like this can be seasonal. So it's slowing down for most of the country. Um, so, you know, my slow month was last month and I, I made 400 bucks, but it was like, eh. um, whereas like, I, like 400 said, cheeseburgers, I'm just saying, right. A hundred percent. Well, I mean, 400 cheeseburgers, maybe back in like 2009 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, inflation okay, 200 cheeseburgers yeah. They're yeah. Two bucks now. Yeah. I missed my dollar menu. Sorry. Oh, the junior bacon cheeseburger. I was going on a rant the other day about it. It used to be 99 cents. And it's like $2 and something. I don't even know how. Right? Half. Dude, it's the wild. big cheeseburger at Jack in the Box is be a dollar nineteen. It's insane. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm realizing that it's a slow month and I've started to kind of uh, take this time and opportunity that I am slower to identify other non-seasonal products that I can probably start throwing up there. Or even even if they are seasonal, but I'm looking at other ways to expand. So like, I actually just purchased a uh, um, a laser engraver. Uh, nice to kind of add to this. So you know, I'm I'm adding baseball ornaments where people can actually you know you know anything to complement when I'm already dealing with the 3D printing Smart. is a huge win. Um, so like, if I can get someone to pick one of these up and they're buying from me now because I also offer this, that's a win. Right. Um, so what you're doing is you're increasing the average order value, yeah, right? Your yeah, AOV. Yeah. And what happens with that is revenue increases. The margins stay the same, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And when the average order value goes up, we're all happy. Yeah. And and it's an incentive in a ways to kind of pull from your competition because your competition's not offering, you know, this baseball horn. Not only that, not... the competition is not sleeping. Yeah. They're yeah. coming after you. Yeah. They're, they, they see... <laughs> Which, mind you, if, if if any of you are on Etsy, and I've, I learned this recently, is that if you're on Etsy, there's a way to disable how, what you're selling, the sa sales history. You, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to Etsy and you go click on the number of sales a store has made, it tells you all of the orders. 
it doesn't tell any PII. There's no private information in there, but it says he sold this, 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 this in the last whatever orders. And I'm like, oh, so this is what I need to target, right? Yeah. Um, the people are using your shop for their research. 100%. So I disabled that. But then I turned that around and I'm like, oh, wait a second. I can do the same thing. So, <laughs> you know, I've also expanded into uh, another product here, which is, you know, now officially my most popular product. And it takes 14 cents worth of plastic to make. Um, and it sells for $15 a pop. Atta boy. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, uh, you, you can go and I don't know, it's it's business, man. You know, the competitors aren't sleeping. You shouldn't be either. You've got to go out and find out what their best sellers are and you've got to try to one up them. Um, and, and that I mean, that's business. Uh, but it, it, it's been fun. It's exciting, too. Business is ex I love business, man. It, it's so it's fun for me. To yeah. me, it's like a video game. I think it's also fun, too, is like one of the most my biggest payoffs is when someone submits a picture in their reviews of your product. Oh, yeah, those used. are the best. They're it, so cool. Yes. You're like, man, I spent, you know, a couple hours, you know, design and then a couple of days printing and, you know, and and then now it's out in the wild and people are loving it. And it's just like, that's so cool to see, Um, which actually, and I don't know if you intended on talking about this, but one of my big things is when I launch a product, for example, this one, I just launched a couple of weeks ago and I'm, it's already, you know, I'm selling quite a bit of them. Um, and I sent these out for a half price. And not only that, I sent them two. So I cut the price in half of what I intended to sell it. And then I sent them two uh, to my first 20 buyers. Why? Because I don't know if it's going to work, right? Like, I know it fits, but like the issue is, is like you don't have quote unquote user testers to be like, well, this was a pain point or this is not going to work or it's not strong enough or it broke after a week. And it's like, well, I'm just one guy. So how can I give them an incentive to give me feedback, but also make sure that they know like, hey, if something does go wrong, I sent you a second one so you have no downtime. Please send me a message of what did go wrong. I can fix it. And then I'll send you the new iteration. Yeah, but you have a, a backup. And testing and product testing. Have to. You have to. Because there's nothing else out there. And I mean, you know, you can only do so much. Here's a broken one right here. You can only do so much testing um, until you're like, I need to get this in other people's hands. Um, and by offering, you know, not only the discount, what's more important than seven or, you know, five to seven dollars off is their time. They don't want to wait for a replacement. So I send two, right? One breaks, you've got a backup, you're out nothing, you know, I I've got your back. Um, and I think that's something a lot of people probably overlook is they, yeah, they just a great kinda, tip there, man. So yeah. did you design these yourself? Yeah. So a lot of these, well, this one specifically, I definitely designed completely from scratch myself, but it's not complicated, right? So like it's a cold shoe mount for all three sides if they want to mount microphones and whatever else to their cameras. Um, but this one is actually um, a replacement piece for, you know, a Hyper X microphone. Um, mm. And apparently they don't sell them. Here's the original. And they don't sell these. And, and it looks like it's print in place. No supports. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I literally print the same exact thing. It looks almost identical. Um, mine's a little bit shorter because my, my competition called theirs the low profile. So <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess I'll make mine shorter. I don't know. Is that something people want? I don't know. So, you know, I wanted to check that box to make sure, you know, if that is something that is enticing to people, then I, I meet that requirement too. Um, but you know, identifying things that, and I think it's most important to do this in something you're passionate about, something you enjoy. Um, but find something that larger companies have no intentions on offering as a part. It's too inconvenient to them to do it, to fire up a manufacturing line. Right. When a small you know, shop or operation like me, I can shoot out 100 of these in a week and it's easy. It doesn't cost me jack. Yeah. But for them to fire up a production line, it costs them thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Of thousands yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, hmm, they're never going to produce those. I, I mean, I don't know. I can't speak for other companies. I'm just saying from my point of view, if they were going to, they would have already. Um, right. So the fact that the demand so high tells me that, you know, it's a problem and people are going to continue to break the original or lose them. It's not a big part, you know. You know, if I take this microphone off and replace it with one of the ones back on my wall, you know, I could lose an adapter or something that it, it's not unheard of. Um, so finding stuff like that, right, is huge. Finding things that people genuinely need to use 
their need to use their product. I see. Um, and, and what software did you use to design these? And I think this is the funny thing is I use Tinkercad. I love it. I absolutely love Tinkercad. Um, everyone's like, Tinkercad. No freaking way, dude. Yeah, Seriously? everything's Tinkercad. Holy I, I, cow. It's just, so, it's so easy. And like Fusion 360 is great, but like I work a full-time job and I don't have time to jump through hoops to learn things. And like, I'm sure it's great. Like, I'm sure it's wonderful, but I just don't have the time for it. Um, my, my biggest goal is to churn out products as quickly as possible. And as, as fast as like, you know, I need to be quality and fast and all of those things. Um, and I also love the fact that since it is on Tinkercad, it's in the, it's in their cloud, right? So I can jump on it from any computer or iPad and modify it. So like I just designed, so I've got movie theater seats in my living room. And one of the products that they sell is a table that slides into the seat. So you can sit there and watch movies and have food. Um, now they sell these they sell these tables for a hundred dollars each chair. So I'm looking at like six hundred dollars just for these tables. So I designed while I was sitting in the chair watching TV on my iPad. I designed a whole table. I'm going to use my laser engraver to cut the wood, but then I already designed the leg and everything to mount to the wood with Tinkercad from from the chair. I didn't have to get on a computer. I didn't have to make sure you know I had everything. In it's all on my iPad. I can just do it. Um, but basically now I run around with digital calipers everywhere, but that's pretty much my only limitation yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're like Batman, right? You got yeah. a whole, you know, utility belt full of measuring stuff and like, Oh, I can make that. Yeah, basically. And, and, the, and it's funny too. Cause like it was a me problem before I realized other people also wish that they could have the same thing. Um, and I think that's probably how a lot of products are born is, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. It is. Absolutely. And it's funny. It really is funny. But people are like, Where, how do you come up with these ideas? And it's like, because I had the same problem. Like, yeah, I wasn't it's about to, the problem. Yeah, I wasn't about to send six hundred dollars to these guys for a table that I could make for five dollars, maybe. Right. Um, so it's just like, well, not with lumber nowadays. Shit. I know. I know. Right. But I don't know, man. I'm pretty excited about this laser engraver, though. Like I created this little this little drafting. Oh, I think I just broke it. <laughs> Didn't grade this in drafting That's for, okay so for the, those of you driving right just you know <laughs> you pull over and then watch the show but that's yeah. a pretty cool looking giraffe man yeah it's like oh dude i'm just breaking it because it's not glued together but <laughs> it's like six layers but i'm like you know that, that's not expensive that's like six dollars i think to me that's awesome dude and yeah and i'll probably turn that thing out for 30 <laughs> let's, let's go back to um Let's go back to the business here a little bit. Yep. Um, how did you get your first clients and your first customers? How did you start getting traction? Um, honestly, I just went straight to Etsy. I, I mean, that was like, and then Etsy and, just picked up the algorithm, and that was done. That was done. It. And there was no one out there. Nobody else I mean, out no there one was, else doing, was it. doing it, right? Yeah, you were so niche. You were so, you're solving a specific problem. Yeah. And I and I quickly and I quickly watched. You know, I was part of these Facebook groups, and I quickly watched. You know, well, you can find it on Etsy. Well, I need this. Well, you can find it on Etsy. You can find, it. and they're like, so people start sharing my links too, and I'm just like, you know, just watching it happen. And That's just, an amazing feeling when somebody else is sharing your link. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I basically tell nobody anything. I don't tell anybody anything. I don't do any kind of re outreach for these at all. Um, Etsy has really pushed it. Now, I will say this because you know my background in development and stuff, so I, I have every intention on. Uh, launching a website and it's already built i just haven't had time to like get the bugs out and everything uh but i have every intention on starting to include you know small business cards with my website and qr code and that way i can start moving people away from etsy because yeah the fees are just stupid um but you know as it stands right now my profit margins are barely hurting because it costs so little to make what i'm making um, so right. I don't, I'm not super bothered by what Etsy takes, but if I can get away with not giving it to them, I, I will. <laughs> I agree. Um, so let's talk about, um, using what you know, right? So you said you help companies mm -hmm. click on things. Okay. So give us a little taste of that. Give us a little tidbit. Like how can we get people to click on our listing as opposed to somebody else's? Sure. So, I mean, a, a big thing is, is getting companies 
to understand what the user wants. Um, you know, I, I've worked for multiple companies at this point that I've done a pretty good job at outreach with users. And I think that is a really good way to get users to want to deal with you and to want to purchase your items um, is because they know that they are having a direct impact on what you're building. Um, if you get feedback from one of your products, the worst thing you could do is ignore it and not address it because that user is going to be like, this guy doesn't care. This guy's not going to fix my issues that I'm running into. Um, or, you know, I had, I woke up this morning with a message on Etsy and the guy's like, Hey, I bought one of your products. You know, I have another product idea. I think you'd really like no one else is doing it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Let's, let's talk about that. So, you know, listening to your users and potential customers of ways to improve or ways to grow your inventory into other niche niches is like a huge way to get returning customers because they feel like they're part of the process. And they feel like if they have a problem, you're going to help them fix it. And you have the resources to do that. And you're going to listen. Um, and that's what I mainly do for these larger companies is, you know, we, we've got teams of dozens of people on working on a single product for a couple of years at a time. And, you know, I probably interview 50 to 60 people over that time. We do one hour calls. I let them use the product. I let them see pictures of the product. And of course, they're all under NDA and stuff, so it's a little different. But um, we let them use products for times, and then we when we get their feedback, and we, you know, what was your reaction? What wasn't normal? What did you like? What didn't you like? What would you change? What would you add? Um, and then even ask about competition. Like, is there something out there that a competitor is doing that I'm not doing that you wish I was doing, or is there something that nobody's doing that we're just missing on entirely? Uh, making users feel like they're part of the process is going to be a huge way to get people to come back. Uh, and feel like they're valued in what you're doing. That's awesome, dude. There you go. That's a huge bomb right there. <laughs> Dropping bombs. He's it's a big tip. Take that in. Um. So, what filament do you use for these? I, I mean, I, I because it's out in the sun. Okay. I'm guessing no, it's, it's not veggie. PLA. There's no way because it's yeah. it'll it'll warp like right. It'll warp into the camera and destroy yeah. that thing. So my guess is you're printing a I am. PETG. I am printing Pet G. Um, I use Overture, um, and I usually buy in bulks of twenty rolls. Um, but you, you know, buy, there buy bulk on Amazon, or you go direct to Overture. I go direct to Overture for the bulk purchases. If I'm in a rush, I'll go to Amazon. Um, now I will say this: so like Prime Day just happened, and there was a a white Pet G on there had five star review, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna give it a try. I bought twenty rolls. So far, I'm not thrilled. And this is the second time I've done this, given another company an opportunity to, you know, win me hey, over. Bro, don't fix it. And I end up going right back to Overture. So, but thing is, I've got to go through 20 rolls of this plastic. So, you know, but I've just replaced four nozzles this morning. And I'm just like, this is going to be a disaster. But, you know, it is what it is. Live and learn. Um, I probably won't give another company another shot. But Overture has been, I've been able to depend on them. And it's been um, it's like clockwork. I There's nothing I don't. There's nothing I haven't seen from them. And uh, when I when I print something, I know what I'm going to get. You know, there, there might be some light stringing. And, and that's actually another thing, too. You know, PEGI is not the easiest thing to print with from a lot of people's point of view because of the stringiness. Um, but and people might, you know, shun me for this or, you know, shame, whatever. <laughs> um, but I don't spend too much time making sure my printers are absolutely perfectly dialed in. I simply don't. Um, there's, there's no need to. Yeah, if there's stringiness, I've got a hot or a heat gun. I'll pull it out. Heat gun, go around, go around. You know, run a brush through there. Gets all the loose strings out. It's done. On away. It's actually faster to do that. Yeah, like I'm not gonna sit there and nitpick at you know. I mean, you've seen people in the forums like <laughs> it's because your bed's in level. Well, if your kit or if your if your printer was calibrated right, you wouldn't deal with this. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I get that, but this is a business. Like, I can't. I, <laughs> This isn't a, like, I'm not out here trying to be, you know, a cosplayer, trying to make sure everything's absolutely perfect for pictures. Like, I'm trying to make sure I have a functional product. Um, and I also laid out some, like, realistic expectations to my users. Like, I have pictures specifically for, like, um, one of my known flaws for my design or for my printing is, like, there is some flawed, you can't even barely see it. But it's just where, it's just where some stringing happened. And it's a little rough there. But... I leave it. 
I, I have clear expectations. I have a picture on Etsy that says expected, unexpected. Because like at, at first when I started, I, I was selling um, blemished versions. So like when I, for example, this this 20 rolls of bad plastic I'm not a fan of, um, I probably have to start doing that again because there's going to be some issues. But some people are okay with paying for blemished versions at a discount. So like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sell this. It might not look pretty. There might be some, um, you know, whatever blemishes I, on I it. I know Joel Telling sells imperfect prints. Yeah, yeah, I do at, too. At a discount. And I, I know he sells a bunch of them. And they go every time. There's I never have leftovers. So, you know, I'll sell them for half off or something. And they always go. So, you know, and, and I think people appreciate that too, because one, you're not wasting plastic, you know, and like, you know, people it's are all for everybody, man. It is. You, they get a discounted thing and it might not be as pretty, but it's functional. And that's what you want, right? You want it to be functional? Cool. You know, does it bother you that has a couple of dots? Mm, probably not. Um, so I think that's a, a huge part too, is just being transparent. Like this is what you expect if you purchase a blemished one. This there, is what you expect. Appreciation for transparency for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think people expect version, perfect, perfect anymore. Matter of fact, people expect imperfection and they welcome it because I think it's a subconscious thing where people are like, hey, you know what? He's imperfect. I'm imperfect. And it's cool. Okay. Right? It, it's an accepting thing. Like, hey, it is what it is. Yeah. It's not going to be perfect. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so do you offer these in different colors or just that white? Just white. So, and have people asked for different colors? Once maybe. <laughs> I know. I think so like the reasoning is, and the justification is, and I think this is why it's probably not been a, a highly requested item um, in different colors is simply because, you know, white reflects the sun. And the concept of this, this is sunshade, right? So you know, if you get another collar, then you, you're opening up the uh, potential of, you know, gathering more heat um, and attracting the heat and attracting the sun. And um, so I think mostly people see this and they're just like, it's white because it's a sunshade. It makes sense. Uh, you know, and the, but the thing is, like, I have, there is another product I do offer and I don't think I have one on me, but it's basically a, a lens cap for this camera. Um, and that I did have, you know, because I had extra rolls of plastic. So I was printing um in different colors and people did enjoy that but the headache was real like the <laughs> headache of trying to keep track of correct inventory for these things like because basically i i print them in batches of 5 these lens caps and i would take them off the bed toss them in a bin update my uh update my inventory but who's to say like i don't know i drop one or something and i just didn't realize it and it went under the shelf and next thing i know someone's buying a blue one and I don't have that anymore, but apparently I had it in inventory. I can reach out to them, but that's inconvenient. That's not a, that's not their problem. That's a me problem. I should have been on top of my stuff. Um, so next thing I know, I'm next day in a roll of filament from Amazon. And it's just like, you know, I, I got back to just being like, I carry white because I already do these sunshades and I carry black because I do parts like this. So it's like, you can get the sunshade in white. Um, and you can get, you know, these lens caps in black and white. Like, if I have extras, then I might throw some up there uh, up there every once in a while. Like, if I notice, like, a plastic's not moving for whatever reason, and it's been sitting there. Um, and that's what happened at one point. I had some clear plastic that has been sitting there. I dried it out, and I just used it, went through, made, you know, 100 lens caps. And uh, people liked them, but, you know, like, that's the only time I usually offer more colors is if I'm trying to get rid of a roll of plastic. Gotcha. So, um, what's the future for you, man? What's uh, where are we going with this? Are, are you going to stay in the in the photography niche? What's the uh, uh, what's the plan? Well, I think well, when it, when it comes to three D printing, I I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of ways to theme this laser engraver up with the three D printing a little bit more. Um, interestingly enough, I found another way to kind of expand, and this is going to sound wacky, but before I, before I, you know, moved to the East Coast and started working with larger companies, I essentially realized that, or I was doing freelance web development. So I was dealing with web, web posts and web servers and stuff, building websites for people who can't afford them, uh, or necessarily not can't afford them, but they don't want to spend more than a thousand bucks. Or so. so at this point, I've basically started to train people on how to do what I was doing because I don't have time to do it anymore. But what I'm doing at the same time is 
I'm helping them target my existing baseball sports teams, leagues. Hey, go contact these, this league, offer them a website for this, and then let them know at the beginning of each season, you're going to get a brand new sunshade. You're getting a lens cap. I'll send you some engraved, you know, plaques, you know, like I'm trying to like partner and teach these individuals who want to expand their horizons and, you know, web development. And I'm trying to partner with them and offer my stuff as a bundle to kind of incentivize people to buy both of our services. Um, now, that's not a rapidly paced expansion. That's not something you can really expect to explode. Um, but at the end of the day, my, my whole goal is to find a few more products that can kind of carry me to that 2000 a month mark, you know, when sunshades maybe are down. But once I do that, I would really like to find the time, and I've tried it before, to build my inventory up and start sending those to Amazon as well. Um, fees are high, higher, but it's Amazon. People will literally buy it simply for next day shipping. Like, it's just simply, like, it's just, it is what it is. Um, and but the thing is, every time I build my inventory up, next thing I know, it's sold again. And I'm like, and that's a good problem to have, but at the same time, it's like, I really need to find time to build inventory enough to send to Amazon and expand that way. Um, but I think that's probably what's next. A couple more products, get some inventory, finally send to Amazon for them to fulfill some stuff. Um, and I think I think that alone might, I don't know, maybe I'm too optimistic, but I think that alone could potentially double my sales. How Getting on Amazon go- will definitely, it'll move the needle a lot for sure. Yeah, because like, how many people find like Etsy does a pretty good job at advertisements on Google, but you know, uh, well, I don't know if how many. If I want something, I immediately go to Amazon. I don't That's, think of Etsy. I go to 100%. Amazon. Hundred percent, absolutely. You're absolutely right. So right. If someone looks, is looking for a sunshade, they go on Amazon. They find you. Any right? accessory for something nine times you want. out of ten, you go to Amazon. Yep. And then if you can't find it, you go to Google and you type it in and see what else pops up. But how many people probably find something on Etsy and they're like, I don't know, man, that seems sketchy. Like a lot of people aren't familiar with Etsy, like. They're just not, they, and it's a good, it's a good, you know, for, it's a good solution, but I don't think that is the final I, solution. I, I think you nail it right on the head. I think for growth, your your target would be Amazon because yeah. your product isn't a craft. It's an actual product that solves a problem. Yeah. Right. So you got to, you got to match your platform to your product as well. I yeah. think, I think you've graduated from Etsy. I think you're right. Amazon is the next step for you. And I think production needs to increase and you need to be able to, to meet that demand first of all um before you go on amazon so anyway I mean, joe thanks for being here man i really course. really do I, I appreciate it so much uh great and talking to you um good luck for thanks. your production and we'll catch you in the next episode man we'll be sure to catch up again sounds good thanks man later